And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Mage Seeker locks. We got a donation deck to start the day off first, and then we'll have meme tier Monday decks after this. Um, we got we got some real interesting ones that we're gonna be we that we're gonna be trying out later. But first, we're starting with a strong deck. This is what um, whenever the Mage Seekers were changed, like originally these were cards that were not very good and saw no play at all. Like this Mage Seeker Persuader was a, like a six mana card that you had to like discard a card to give it a little bit of power. And it just, it was not a card that was played at all. Hey, Duckling, get that sub hype in here. What's up, man? Thank you so much. Um, and uh, let's see, let me update that. Three out of five now. Okay. Um, but once these Mage Seekers changed and all these ch cards changed completely, uh, they updated those to ha help them see more play. At that point, the most common way to try them out was with Heimerdinger and Lux. So you can, this is kind of old school Mage Seeker Lux. That's why I like the Mage Seeker, um, the spooky Mage Seeker deck we played the other day. Could call that one Mage Seeker Lux also because Lux is very important in the Mage Seeker decks. But this was the traditional um, version of Mage Seeker Lux. Um, anyway, like this deck, Remembrance is a big, big part of it. You know, as you see here, there's three Remembrance, one Unyielding Spirit. These are the only cards that turn on our Mage Seekers uh, that it looks like, you know, like we need we need a six plus cost spell for all of these. However, now we also have Flash of Brilliance that also always creates a random spell that costs six plus in hand. So Flash of Brilliance can secretly help turn on those Mage Seekers as well. But as far as mulliganing we're gonna be looking for remembrance uh quite often hey what's up ivad um thanks to that resub nice say i've i've also fully switched to legends of runeterra from mtg and i'm loving it that is great i've had yeah thank you so much for keeping that sub going 14 amazing months thanks duckling all right, um, yeah, and Flash of Brilliance can create Unyielding Spirit sometimes. That is pretty awesome with pairing it with Demacia for sure. Um, all right, so yeah, let's let's get some let's play some games. We're gonna play some Mage Seeker Lux. Dang, I'm at eight thirty two. We must have fallen down some overnight. But yeah, we're gonna go play some ranked five games as always, and we're gonna have Heimerdinger and Lux together. Um, am I playing Ezreal Karma today? No, I'm not. Um, I'm sure when was the last time I played Ezreal Karma? I haven't played Ezreal Karma in a while. This was my last video with the deck. Um, which was May 6th. All right, anyway. So we have Heimerdinger Flash of Brilliance. It's a pretty good combo. Mulligan Lux. Um, oh, also, yeah, Mage Seeker Conservator can create spells. Basically, do I want to mulligan this combo or keep it? I think we're supposed to keep it, but I would like mulliganing more to find Remembrance, honestly. That's just such a good combo. Hecarim Elise with Bilgewater. What are we using Bilgewater for? Monkey Idol? Hey, mangirls. Hello, hello. Phantom Prankster. Will you comply, or are you complicit? Shut your tongue! Here, you can be sorry. Thank you. 
Reckoning. <laughs> that one's not so good. So this is kind of an awkward turn for us because we kind of can't play Mage Seeker Insider if we want to go Heimerdinger plus Flash of Brilliance plus Thermogenic Beam at next turn. I wonder how Mage Seeker Insider with Reckoning works. You know, if I have Mage Seeker Insider and play that's a 4-3, and then I just play Reckoning, will this turn into 5 plus power? Will it grant the plus 2 plus 2? Because it says once you've cast, so I guess you'd have to... Hmm. I'm not sure how that would work. Order, entropy, a never-ending cycle. I doubt it would work like we wanted to. But I don't know, it's possible it does. Once Mage Seeker is leveled up, it works. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, what if Mage Seeker didn't level up beforehand? Would it still work? Nice, Mary. Yeah, I'm gonna craft three Sejuani after tomorrow. Very nice. Do you need a double Mystic Shot that Neverglade Collector? Ooh, or we just make a Challenger. We'll challenge one of these Neverglade Collectors. Oh no. Mega Rain took out my two elusive turrets. That was a pretty good Mega Rain. I'm glad I didn't block with the Heimerdinger the last turn though and get Mega Rained. Um, I don't think I want to like do this attack and let them block with the Abomination. And get an additional Drain in. I can double Mystic Shot right now. Keep them from doing any other draining. Come closer. Or I can just cast this Reckoning. Fight. It will kill my Heimerdinger. But it'll kill all these things at the same time so they won't get any drains at all. <clears throat> it's probably worth it. I could like Withering Whale in response and then it would break it up. So it's kind of risky. Yeah, Team of Sejuani's a lot of fun. Dimensions don't determine themselves. Is that worth the risk? Probably not worth the risk. Okay. Now it's going to be pretty hard for them to stop this. They would have to have Make It Rain and also get lucky and hit both of those cards. <clears throat> Sorry, Hummerdinger. I 
but that was well worth it. What's up, thanks, dude? No, like whenever the, the spell finished resolving, like Heimerdinger sees like the spells resolve, not just cast. And it's like it's whenever the spell resolved, the Heimerdinger was dead. Right, so this thing's going to do one damage to me to put me to five. Probably okay. Because if I would have dealt like one of the damage to them, I could have had lethal this turn. So when I deal like you know two or two damage to them. I'm not too worried about that. And oh. definitely had a lot of power <clears throat> there, and yeah, grabbing that reckoning was like kind of it was kind of random grabbing that reckoning, but it was also like really good grabbing that reckoning as well. You know, it was like randomly really strong. GG. Ezreal Sejuani. Send them all back. Remember it. Darn. I don't really want to play a two, three two mage seeker persuader and let it get mystic shotted. <clears throat> Shot that thing. We're gonna be leveling up the Sejuani fairly easily with this Omen Hawk. Uh, am I supposed to, so am I supposed to like Mystic Shot Omen Hawk also? Keep them from leveling up. I guess so. It's not like Mystic Shot doesn't kill either of these things anyway. Good, not another mystic shot. Good. Still like a in uniform. 
seven, six. three cards in hand. Ideally, I'd want to concerted strike this thing. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Let me just block barrier. I don't hit block barrier. Concerted strike's not only really vulnerable to just them using a re removal spell on one of these things, but also... Um, um, but also I may need that for their champions. All right, basically doing that, uh, targeting their things. I don't want to target like one of my things and they kill my thing and then my spell doesn't resolve. I need my six mana spell to resolve. So I have to target both of theirs. Uh, and we'll just make both of theirs two threes instead of seven threes. Even though the two threes are real. These are really good two threes. Yuck. Harsh Winds was great. I'd say, like, maybe they'd use, like, a removal spell on, like, one of my things and, like, the other one would kill, but yeah, Harsh Winds getting both of them was perfect. But, yep, they'll have something that's... something that's just absolutely huge. They have static shock. I'm in, I'm in a lot of trouble. But okay, they did not. <clears throat> Puff cap peddler. Stand in, you can't outrun justice. You have no alibi. Huh. Okay, so they're casting that just to give the plus the plus two plus two of those things. Uh no, there's no I don't think they've announced anything about what the season rewards will be. As far as I know. Can't even kill this thing. A true Fragorian welcome. Look out! You'll go no farther. So Juani's a one out of five. Rich 
Ritual of Renewal. Got a bunch of random stuff in here. Um, we can cast Remembrance and Ritual of Renewal or kill this 1110. I think we want to kill the 1110. That seems like a good idea. Great Horn Companion. All right, so we know we know that they have some kind of creature in hand. Yuck! That's Radiant Guardian's the worst card to hit. is going to be annoying. Sounds dangerous. I'm in. Yeah, we'll have detain now. Um, I don't love just using detain though. So I think we'll be like whatever whatever we use to detain, it will be pretty um, vulnerable. So does this count the harsh winds thing? Like, can I can I turn this into being an O3? How's that gonna work? Yeah, that's that's probably let's see. Let's let's I don't know. I'm going to just do yeah, I'm going to do this. Let's see. Okay, now we're going to do No, I'm going to keep the single combat. I'll just let the 5/5 five five die. I'm going to keep single combat. Another Ezreal or Sejuani or something. Like, you know, I could have also fought with, with that and then might keep my 5-5 five five alive. Put 
Yeah, possible I should should have just detained. Or no, I didn't have the mana to also detain. I couldn't do the hex tech and detain, like detain my own 5-5. Five five. So it is two targets. Even if I detain this investigator, they'll still get to draw a card and do one damage to that thing. Imminently logical. So close. Fight for your lives. Bow to no one. Okay. Born for conquest. All right, so obviously it looks like we're forced to use the detain. We'll use it on this thing that's put it on underneath the Lux. Challenger. Hmm. Maybe I should have killed that thing. Which I still can. Each card well. is basically one puff cap. No puff caps, that was pretty good. Yeah, not hitting a puff cap on that draw three. We gotta, gotta kill this thing before we play T-Hex, so they can't just frostbite my T-Hex. And doing, doing the get excited instead of the thermogenic beam so that we can have the single combat available, you know, or the beam. If we can have one of those available afterwards. But basically, like this, this, you know, we'll have challengers. So they'd have to have like multiple blockers for my T hacks. Like, they're basically going to have frostbite. Like, they have to have like harsh winds. Hmm. Or Fury of the North.
Oh, yeah, the Sejuani effect's only once per turn, isn't it? Oh. Alright, well, that makes things a little easier for me. Alright, no harsh winds. So we good. Alright, that was a long uh, drawn out game, but that was that was definitely a good game. But that feels really powerful. Yeah, this deck's feeling really powerful. Like both Heimerdinger and Lux are really powerful cards, and then just we have a lot of ways to make um, you know, powerful spells with Flash of Brilliance and even the Mage Seeker Conservator. Yeah, I'm liking how our deck's feeling. Yeah, deck's looking good. Deck's looking good so far. No complaints. <clears throat> Just mulligan everything, look for remembrance. Maybe. I mean, we can't just have two mana 3-2, three, three mana 3-3. Three, three. It's not like that's bad. But it, it's, you know, perfectly reasonable. Um, they're not as good as they can be. Maybe I just keep that. Because, like, we could, we could mulligan to get a really poor hand. I guess we just probably keep those cards until we have, like, a, a baseline of at least having that. Cool. We got Remembrance. So we can go turn three Remembrance, and then turn four go Insider, or um, you know Persuader plus another two mana spell, such as a single combat or another Persuader, and then turn five we got Heimerdinger plus Flash of Brilliance. So we're not doing anything turn one or turn two. They got their little one ones. <clears throat> but hopefully we can start turning the corner now. There's the single combat for next turn. Persuader combat. Heimerdinger brilliance. Greyhorn companion is awesome. All right, sure. One mana, three, three. Not bad. That's how it is. All right, so not attacking with the five, four into the four, four. I'd rather save the 5-4 to keep the 3-3 three, three from attacking. I won't have the spell mana for Heimerdinger plus Flash of Brilliance in mine. Confine and contain. There 
out there. House magic is insidious. So we stay vigilant. Things are big. Justice. Oh, worth it. Time to get my hands dirty. You have no alibi. Black mentality. You're gonna need a lot of turrets for that. Alright, so we both have five cards in hand. They have Callista for their one champion. Obviously, they who endure is like probably the only card that's gonna kill me, and so we may need like Mage Seeker, you know, Grant to play this Mage Seeker Conservator pretty soon to get a um, get a detain to help against that. Both of our things survive. We'll just be playing the Investigator this turn. Um, if something dies, we'll have Remembrance. Five mana. They go like Grass the Undying here or something. Yes, double flash of brilliance. This is gonna be a turn. Answers, I have them. Hmm, it's gonna be a turn. Ugh, need one more mana for that. three two ones basically they're gonna hit me for one and also drain me for one so two four six eight so we now to ten with no blocks I'm through waiting now right, block that thing I trust my instincts that's eleven Most 
groundbreaking invention to date. <laughs> we have this turret I won't even be able to play. I don't know, what if I play this over the Heimerdinger? Just go in for lethal. Like right now I'm attacking for 18. I guess I could just play it over one of the three ones. <clears throat> yeah, Withering Whale would would it be problematic. You have no so that's still that's still lethal now. So just put it over the three one because. If I would have kept the 3 1, we'd be attacking for 18. Now we're attacking for 20 with that extra 2 damage. Attack mentality is is those decks. Calculated. They don't always, but they should play one ruination. They should always play one ruination, in my opinion. I think. I think if you're not playing one ruination, that's just incorrect. You should always have one ruination. So that's kind of the problem. We already are attacking for lethal. If I go pack mentality and they go ruination, like that's just the absolute worst case scenario. So if I if I just attack and they withering whale, they stay alive. It's not the worst case scenario. All right, three now. Deep. This is this is a matchup that I wasn't sure exactly how it's going to play out, to be honest. I'm interested to see how this one will happen. I like this opening hand. We'll keep it. No one drop, no two drop. That's got to be good for me. Especially none of the, the one mana two ones that get rid of three cards. Alright, we'll just let them gain their life. While they're at 20... Whole bunch of those things though. I will keep us safe. Looks like. <laughs> yeah, I like Slay the Spire a lot. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good game. There's a new game kind of similar to Slay the Spire that just came out called Monster Train that I have not played yet. But I was thinking about playing that on stream for the first time ever. So what's my plan here? I could go straight to attacks. I could have the 5-1 challenge and just trade and let them gain the 3 life while they're at 20. And then hit them for 6, put them down to 14. And then I have 5 mana. I had a thing die. I could go 5 mana remembrance. I could just play the two Mage Seeker Persuaders. And that's, that's the more aggressive line is playing the Mage Seeker Persuaders to be able to challenge. Um, yeah, it's definitely the more aggressive line, which I kind of like. I guess I'll just do this line. 
<clears throat> the only thing is we could try to get Heimerdinger out here post-combat. Yeah, I kind of wish I would have gone the aggressive line of just playing both of those. All right. Well, they would have they would have had these two to blocks. So like we would have traded with the Jaw Hunters and would have killed that thing. So we wouldn't have gotten any more damage in. Teemo Emo is the best. Also, it's fun to say Teemo Emo. Yeah, the Teemo Emo. Definitely the best. <laughs> Nothing makes you happier than beating an emoter. Yeah, it is it is a teamote. That is true. That's a good name for it, the teamote. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be playing that thing. Maybe not. May just take up valuable board space. I don't really expect this to work, but I guess if they have no fast spells, we kill them here. Right? Let's see. No, I guess we don't kill them, right? Because they would block locks, gain two life. I guess it's not lethal. I was thinking it was lethal, but it's not. We go to attacks like this. Let's see, this block's here, they gain two life, they gain that, and they block the six over there. So then they go to one. So no, that's not lethal. 
I was thinking that was lethal for some reason. Tis not. Order, entropy, a never ending cycle. So this should create a 5-1 turret and level up Lux, if this works. Then I'll just use the 5-1 to replace this crappy 1-4 that I should have never played. Okay, well... Alright, GG's. Because now they take three, they block a five, gain two, so they still take one, and then yeah, yep, so that's lethal. Alright, our deck's looking great. We are four and O, oh, and just just crush him. Five win dream. Five win dream. Let's go. Got to get all of these wins so that we can we can give all the rank back on for meme tier Monday. Yeah, this this really could be a, a good metagame deck, Gucci. I, I agree. You said you know this is your deck. You said that you've been playing at like an eighty percent win rate. But they, yeah, like this deck's good, especially with how how slower the metagame is. How there's not as much aggro. So Freljord, Shadow Isles, no champions. Gotta be they who endure. We'll keep, you know, again, we don't do anything turn one or turn two, but then we'll have turn three, Remembrance, turn four, Insider. This version probably has, like, how would I compare this to the the spooky version? This version probably ha has more power because of Heimerdinger. So you have, um, you can just have the ridiculous stuff that Heimerdinger does. In a faster metagame, a card that's really good in this deck is actually the two mana, two one, that whenever you play it, you get two spell mana. You know, basically you attune it to. Um, I forgot the name of that card. But that card is really good in, in a faster metagame because you can still play that on turn two and, you know, like have like a, a blocker and stuff on turn two while, while still playing Remembrance on turn three. So that can be an important card. Magic has no place here. Yeah, I haven't drawn the Unyielding Spirit yet. That's okay. I don't... I think that's... Unyielding Spirit's kind of like a, a break glass in case of emergency kind of card. I don't know. It's an it's an 8 mana card. It's not a card that I want. Um, you know, I don't just like want that in my hand all the time. It's an 8 mana card. Guilty is evident. 
magic stuff with me. Do your worst. think unyielding spirits necessarily a win more card there's, there's definitely games that it will win on its own but it's also just a, a card that's not you know it's it's not a card that you need every single game you have no alibi, you have no alibi. All right, looking like a 5-0. Okay, not... Eh, I should just let him have it. Make sure you have it. They worked really hard for that. We should let him have it. Like Vile Feast gains one life. All right, five and zero. Oh. There we go. Go from like eight hundred something to four hundred something. Get him back up there. Yeah, this deck's really good. Um. We didn't really have Grizzled Ranger very much. Um, yeah, it didn't really seem... Yeah, that was a card we didn't really have very much at all. Didn't have Unyielding Spirit. Um, but yeah, like you, you want to have Remembrance on three, and then turn four, you want to either have like Persuader plus Mystic Shot. You, like, you want like Double Spell with two drops, or have Insider. Like, those are like the best turn four plays. But yeah, it just felt really strong that we have like that kind of stuff, and then just some games you're just like, oh yeah, we're, we're we also have Heimerdinger with a whole bunch of turrets. Because the thing is, like these all these threats are like these are like really big threats. Like not only like the the huge you know the huge ally you make from Remembrance, you have the big six five Mage Seeker Insider, you have you know the Persuader that's a four three Challenger, kind of being your removal spell, being a really nice Swiss Army knife for only two mana, which is pretty incredible. And uh, you have all, and so like your your opponents like having to deal with all that all that kind of stuff, and then it's just you have Lux, and then they're like, oh, I guess maybe like maybe they have like one Vengeance left they have to use on Lux, and then you have Heimerdinger that stays around and continues to make turrets because you have like all those other threats, and you're not just like, it's not like we're playing like a Heimerdinger deck where it's like like the like think about like the Vi Heimerdinger deck, um, where they can like kind of ignore the other cards you have and just make sure they have removal for Vi and Heimerdinger. Like that's what they're that's what they're going for all the time. They can't just save removal for Heimerdinger and Lux, because like, you know, we're we have like these big things that are doing a lot um that are like killing them and they have to use removal on those and then we just have Heimerdinger and Lux that can just finish out games. Um so yeah, felt really powerful in that respect. I do think that the burn aggro would be a really tough matchup, but there's just not much burn aggro around at all. But I do think that that would be a bad matchup. But now that, like, especially right now with people not playing burn aggro right now, it's a really good choice. Yeah, definitely want a mulligan for, for remem like, Remembrance is, is the most important card to see in the opener. Absolutely. Um... So there we go. All right, five zero. Oh, that's always always a good one. Um, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and you know feel free to leave those comments uh, as well. Let me know what you think of the deck. If you try this deck out yourself, let me know how how it's going for you. Yeah, this is, this one looks really powerful in this mid range meta game that we got. Um, I like it. All right, anyway. That's it here from Mage Seeker Lux, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.